Oh, right. It's uh, BBC Radio Oxford. I'm laughing because my next guest is uh, is a regular on a Friday, of course. It's Van Connor to talk about movies. And as soon as I mentioned the uh, James Bond film and what that was the theme for, I could see on his face. He was just... You just really wanted to answer that question, didn't you, Van? Because I have no doubt you actually know the answer to that. I, I do, and it's low-key the best Bond movie. I mean, it's, 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 the, it's the snob's answer to what is the best Bond movie. That's all I'm going to say. I'm just going to leave it there. <laughs> it's a really good Bond movie, but, yeah, I just thought I'd it's put that... It's a great one. So, um, new movies out this week. We will just mention you're, you're in a slightly noisier place than, than normal. You're not in your home studio. You're... Um, I, but it looks like you're outside a bar. <laughs> I'm, I'm outside. I'm outside the Crooked Crowbar in Leighton Buzzard. This is where I host the uh, the film night every month and the, the retro retro game events that we do. So we, I did Wayne's World here a couple of nights ago. In your shorts and t-shirt, looking lovely and sunny. In, in my shorts. I've got t-shirt. a glass of something cold as well, Van, while you're sat there in the sun. I have a gl- I have a lovely, refreshing glass of diet coke oh, so, there because it is. I am a consummate professional. <laughs> right. So we got two movies to talk about this week. I know one of them is the new Transformers movie, which we will follow on to in a second. First, though, uh, where do you want to start? Love without falls, walls, even. Lo- <laughs> lo- love without. I mean, love without falls That's sounds healthier, one. but it love does. without walls is a lot more harrowing, definitely. <laughs> so a new movie from writer director Jane Gull, who I think back in 2016 was the director of uh, My Feral Heart, which was a Down syndrome drama that was garnered a lot of really positive buzz and some decent acclaim. And was a really, really good movie. Um, this is a new story about uh, a British contemporary British couple uh, played by uh, Sharma Swash and Niall McNamee. And it is this couple are struggling with you know, the mounting cost of living crisis, increasing bills, you know, f- financial dire straits, and event- eventually being forced into homelessness. And the toll that this takes, not just on their lives, but on their relationship as well. I've got a clip for you to set the tone. Have you got any more gigs coming up? Yeah, a couple. You want to stick to carry out your mate? Sorry, what's going on? Is this your vehicle? Yeah, this vehicle shouldn't be on the road. I'm going to fail the knowledge, so what do no we do then? No one fails the knowledge, I just give up. If you have up. something to fall back on, you're going to fall back on it. That's how it works. No one who's successful ever had a plan B. You're enough for me. But this isn't enough for us, is it? I was really sorry to hear about your dad. Yeah, he's a top bloke. Have you got any ID? No, because we lost everything. Passport? Nope. Utility bill? Oh, sake, we don't have anything! Now, this is the one that's got Paul Barber in, isn't it? Of course, from um, Only Fools and Horses and Full Monty. The Full Monty, yeah, of course. And he's going to be back on, on our screens in less than a week in the presumed revival of The Full Monty as yeah. well, which I think is dropping on Wednesday on Disney+, Plus, if memory serves. And uh, he gets quite a sh- uh, short but punchy in effect, literally punchy, an effective role here. Um, but, of course, it's all about um, the chemistry and the relationship between Nar Matnami and Sharma Swash, which is, I think, the standout element of the film. It's well directed, but I think on the scripting side, it, it to use an old TV term, it jumps the shark when it gets to its final reel, when it gets to that third act, and it just takes it from a direction which starts off in kind of a comparatively I, Daniel Blake, or to use a much more relevant example, Rosie from 2018, kind of a territory, and then just goes a bit too sensationalised, and for my money, a bit too silly for what it needs to be. OK, well, if you want to make your own mind up, that one is in cinemas from today, if I'm right. Yeah. It okay. is indeed cinemas from today. So let's move on to the big one. And I say the big one because I know a lot of people were waiting for this to be released out today. It is the new Transformers. Yeah, there's a lot. I mean, it's got a cult following, hasn't it? I mean, I, I can tell already that you weren't pleased with this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I mean, it's, it's the seventh one of these. I'm just going to preface this by saying I was a childhood Transformers fan. You know, the 80s OG Gen 1 Transformers. Like, yeah. that is absolutely my bag baby, to quote Austin Powers. But, um, you know, I grew up with the, 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 the die-cast metal toys, and the fact that they're the same toys are now made out of very disposable, meltable plastic, for my money, says an awful lot about where this brand has gone in four decades. So... We've now got the seventh one of these. This one ignores all the continuity of all the Michael Bay movies, and it follows on solely from Bumblebee from three or four years ago with Hayley Steinfeld. Yep. That was where we went back to the 80s. We revisited more of an Amblin-type concept, um, and you know, that was revolving around the character Bumblebee. Bumblebee has now been replaced as the lead Autobot by Mirage, who is voiced here by Pete Davidson, because 
God forbid we have any major franchise this year in which Pete Davidson does not feel the need to show up. He has the best agent in the business, that's all I can say. And uh, he and his human companion, who he meets in 1994 in this new setting, um, are all that stands between, you know, the Earth and complete destruction at the hands of the Terracons, I think they're called, who are like a new evil race of Transformers who serve the planet-eating Transformer known as Unicron. And, uh, yeah, and they basically have to team up with the Autobots and the Maximals, who are a sort of primate version, like apes and saber-toothed tiger versions of the Autobots, to, to save the world. I've got a clip for you. This is, this is our new human lead, played by Anthony Ramos, meeting the Autobots for the first time. <laughs> oh, good! I haven't cooped up forever, dude. This is probably a lot for you, huh? Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. I thought after the car chase we were boys. What are you? The name's Mirage. Come on, give me a little, give me a little, give me a little, give me a little tap. Give me a little tap. There you go. Now we're friends. Oh great, the gang's here. They're more like you. a human here i'm nobody i ain't even seen nothing i'm not even seeing anything right now do you get the impression that maybe they're making these things a bit too complicated i mean i could not tell you what the plot of this movie was it's that level of complication it's not even complicated it's just convoluted it's absolute nonsense to the nth degree so on the one hand, you have, you know, the jingoistic pro-military nonsense of, you know, the, the, the TNA fact that Michael Bay always crowbarred into these things. And on the other hand, you have the more Spielbergian Amblin aspect of Bumblebee. And in the middle of it, you have this, which tries to have its cake and eat it and really just makes a mess, for lack of a better, better, better term. Um, the human leads do the best they can. You say you've got Anthony Ramos from West Side Story, Dominique Fishback from Power. And they're fine, but they've not got an awful lot to work with. They're very boilerplate generic characters. And in the end, all you're left with is more crashy, crashy, wham, bam, wallop, what an explosion. Only this time, you've not got the fun of Michael Bay shooting it from 36 different angles and, and quick cutting as if he's doing it to a music video, which I found myself kind of nostalgic for. I mean, to be honest with you, it's so convoluted and dull that at times I almost found myself missing the uh, very thinly guised misogyny of the Michael Bay era. Like, I mean, say what you will, at least it had a personality. This doesn't have a personality. It just has nonsense and waffle and convolution and then explosions, lots and lots of explosions, none of which you can see coherently because it's metal on metal. So, and, and every, everything's gray, every Transformer is gray now. They're all like dark gray. So you can't tell them apart, honestly. I, I, I suffered through two hours and three minutes of this, and I still can't tell you what the hell any of it was actually about, except apparently Ron Perlman picked up a paycheck for this. So good, good for hell, boy. Do you think maybe they've aimed this at the younger generation? I mean, my little boy, he's four. He's watched all of the Transformers movies with myself over the last year. Uh, you know, I think he would probably sit down and enjoy this, right? I mean, on a scripting level, it, it, it's, a, it's, it's aimed kind of perfectly at a four-year-old, to be fair. That's, that's about the, the, the level you'd need to be operating at to find this in any way impressive. For me, it's just, it just feels like, you know, let's, let's check a couple Hundy Mill, you know, at, at, at the box office. We'll see how well it does in China. Get it in IMAX screens. I'm sure this, you know, 3D is still selling. And no. <laughs> I mean, the final, the final reel, the final moment, not even reel, the final moment of this film involves a, a cross-brand marketing push so patronising that I genuinely just found myself involuntarily yelling at the screen. So I apologise to anyone who was in the IMAX with me, by the way, but it, 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 was, it was involuntary and it couldn't be helped. I've seen some gubbins pushed on cinema screens in my time, but the final brand drop at the end of this is absolutely head smacked into the back of the seat in front of you, nauseating. Right, OK. Well, that's made me want to actually watch it so that I know what you're talking about now. You just want to know, you just want to know don't you? That's I absolutely do. Um, but if you want to make your mind up or find out exactly what Van's talking about, it's out in cinemas from today. Uh, I'm going to let you get back to your drinks in the sunshine and um, enjoy yourself. Before that, what are we talking about next week? 
Oh, next week, sir. We're, we're going well because we've not gone into the multiverse for ooh a whole week, week. now. <laughs> so we're going back into the multiverse. This time we're going with the fastest man alive. We're going with Ezra Miller's Flash. Flash. This time, of course, that's the big one next week. Look forward to chatting about that. Have a lovely rest of your uh, Friday and enjoy your weekend, Van. Till the next time, good stuff. Thank you, my friends. Right, BBC Radio Oxford, Texas. This is After All.